Greetings, I'm Mike Pacelli. For this lesson, we'll take a look at Feel Like Making Love, recorded in 1975 by Bad Company. Bad Company is a super group consisting of members of Free, Mott the Hoople, and King Crimson. The band had many hit songs and was managed by Peter Grant, who also managed Led Zeppelin. The main riff for Feel Like Making Love is pretty much a direct ripoff of the Who song Sparks from their 1969 album Tommy. The only difference is that Sparks is in the key of E and Feel Like Making Love is in the key of D. But no matter what the influence was, Feel Like Making Love is an infectious rock guitar anthem featuring the impeccable vocals of Paul Rogers and the guitar tone of Mick Ralphs. The guitar in Feel Like Making Love is in standard tuning. The electric tone is pure Les Paul, so much so that you can hear the maple top singing. It doesn't take much effort to get the tone. Use the Les Paul bridge pickup with an overdrive pedal, turn up to five o'clock. I'm using a moderate amount of reverb throughout the song. And you'll also want a little bit of delay on the lead work. That will get you the fat tone used on the chorus and for the ad lib licks during the outro. For the solo, switch to the middle pickup position. Turn off the distortion pedal and use a clean tone on your amp. Now the intro is played on an acoustic guitar, but for the sake of simplicity, we're going to stay on electric. A Les Paul can again emulate the necessary tones quite nicely. So again, use the middle pickup with the volume turned down low or the overdrive completely off to simulate the delicateness of an acoustic guitar. Then switch to the bridge pickup with the volume on 10 for the overdrive sections. And I'm using my Gibson 1960 Classic Les Paul. The song starts with a four-bar acoustic guitar intro that's very mandolin-like, but on the record, it's these simple chords played on the guitar's upper register. D. Slide that down two frets to C. A G suspended. And a G. And a D. And here's how it's played. Now note the mandolin-like quality of the intro. You could use an open fourth string D to drone to emphasize this if you'd like, and that would sound like this. The guitar playing during the verse is gentle and features a jangly acoustic guitar with a few cool inside moves. Now here are the chords you'll need. Um, D, we'll call this D1 in first position. We'll need a G, looks like this, and a C add nine, <clears throat> that's just in the middle, from, uh, from five to two. Third fret, second fret, open, third fret, C add nine. And here's the basic rhythm without the inside moves. Now both of the inside moves are hammer-ons based on the G chord and played with the first finger. Now, the first one is... Now when I take the G form, I'm simply uh, picking up my first finger and playing an open fifth string to the second fret, hammering down, and then an open D. So D chord. Now the second inside move leads into the accent of the C add nine chord on the fourth beat, and it goes like this. So it's open, fifth string, second fret, third fret. So coming off a D chord. But he actually plays both of them on that measure. It's a little confusing, but it's like this. These kind of moves are very effective and they add color and interest to rhythm playing. That same little hammer-on can be used on the fifth, fourth, or third string when playing a G chord. You can mix and match their order if, to your liking. So if you're playing a G chord, you can go the one I showed you, or you can hammer on the fourth string. 
or hammer on the third string. So on a G, so, oh, you can use, mix and match those, it's kind of cool. Like, And let's play the intro and the verse together. Ready? One, two, three, four. And you notice on the D chord, uh, I sometimes like to suspend that. So you play the D chord and make the second fret the third fret. With your pinky, you can also pick up the second finger. It's gonna sound like. It's not really done on the record, but it sounds cool. that if you like. For the chorus, kick on the overdrive to play the main riff. And it goes like this. I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, the lick is played on the fifth string, third fret to the fifth fret. And then you play your D chord. Then the C add nine, then the G. With the distortion. Now on the record, this section is doubled and you could hear two distinct voicings on the D chord. One guitar is using the D first position and the other is using uh, a power chord. And here's the power chord, a D like this. So it's uh, from fifth, fourth, third string, fifth fret, seventh, seventh, D. Now if you're playing the song using one guitar, I'd suggest alternating the two D voicings and be sure to mute when, when you use the open D string of the, of the D chord and, and if you want to use the uh, open D of the, uh, the riff. So instead of, you can also go, right? It could either be, but don't let that D uh, open string ring out. It's not. So using, using both of the, the D chords would look like this. The chorus ends using one new chord and an otherworldly low bend of an F note on the sixth string. Now here's the new chord. It's actually a uh, G over B, and it looks like this. Four inside strings, uh, on the fifth string, second fret, open, 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 third fret, G over B. You can also play that like this, if you like, uh, which would be four, I'm sorry, two, five, four, three. But they use this on the record. And I think I'll show you one other way. From the C, if you lower this first finger, that implies G over B. But the main way, but as, as I play it, I'm probably gonna grab, because that's what I do. But here's how it's played.
Now be sure to bend the low F ever so slightly sharp, but don't bend it to an F sharp. Don't go like, which is the, the, uh, the third of the D chord you're targeting. So it's just not F sharp. So from the uh, C to the uh, B over G. And you can hear on the record where they let the A note ring out of the D chord. So not, not just playing the uh, a, a traditional D, it's also using the fish string open. So it sounds like this. Also cool, I guess, if you would tune down your uh, six string uh, to a low D if you wanted to add a little extra low color. The verse and chorus are repeated, played just like the first time through, and then there's a really wonderful harmony guitar solo. Guitarist Mick Ralphs must have known that the solo was compositionally perfect because he repeated it twice. Lucky for us, it's simple enough to play both parts at once. And it goes like this. Now let me break it down for you. Um, we're gonna hammer on, first we'll bar the seventh fret of the fifth, fourth, and third string. Hammer on the fifth string from seven to nine. And you kinda wanna, you wanna play all those notes, but not too strong. You just kinda wanna gra gradually get, get all three of them to simulate three guitars in harmony. Like that. And then, uh, seven, Five of the fifth to fourth, and this little triad. And that triad is on the third, second, and uh, sorry, fourth, third, and second string. Nine, seven, eight. So again, lift that up and bar the seventh of the uh, 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 fourth, third, and second string. Now we bring down everybody. I'm sorry. So that's uh, fourth string, uh, nine, fifth, third, nine, second, eight. Now we're going to bar the seventh fret of the third, second, and first string. Do a little trill. I'm sorry, go down with the trill. So down to the fifth and back to that triad which again is uh, fourth string uh, nine, seven, eight. So I'll do that slow. And then the second time, don't really do the hammer on, maybe just play, play a traditional D. Now note how the solo uses double stops of a D chord, and there's many variations of that possible. So that's your traditional D. We'll call this a double stop, which means two notes play together. But you have, you can hammer on the uh, fifth string. You can also hammer on the fourth string. You can hammer on the third string. It's nice, nice little variations you can if you want to vary the solo. played a bit for the sake of the demonstration. But also noteworthy is how, how free and loosely the chords are strummed on an acoustic underneath the solo. It's kind of like this. Simple, but just absolutely perfect. The last verse continues strumming the chords freely under the lead vocal, just like during the solo. 
and after that the chorus repeats numerous times. And of note here is the tasteful restraint of Mick Ralph's on the recording. There was a fantastic bed to absolutely burn over, and Mick certainly could have, but he plays sporadic and tastefully, blending deep pentatonic runs in between the ad-lib vocal outro. Now Mick particularly uses the fourth bend to the fifth and resolves it to the tonic through the third a lot. This is played uh, on the first and second strings, fret uh, 15 and 13, like this. He likes this lick. Right. Starting on the 15th fret of the, of the first string. Down uh, to 13, 15 to the third. And there's also a lovely slow bend of the uh, of the seventh, the 13th fret of the second string to the tonic, 10th fret of the first string. Uh, so we're at the uh, uh, second string, 13th fret. And then he hits the 10th uh, uh, fret of the, of the first string. And, and Mick uses a, a real bluesy fifth to the seventh move, 14th fret of the third string to 13th fret of the second string, written like this. 14 to 13. A lot of uh, third to the uh, root. Uh, it gets tenth fret of the of the uh, third string to the twelfth fret of the uh, uh, fourth string. This is all easy pentatonic stuff. If you if you uh, don't know the pentatonic scale, it's just um, we'll start. I'll start low to high. Um, 10, 13, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 10, 13, 10, 12, 15. And those are the notes he's using. And I strongly suggest you sit down with the record and mirror those ad lib Mick Ralph licks. And although they are spontaneous and improvisational, it's a worthwhile investment of your time. Feel Like Making Love is a good example of a composition that works very well in an arena setting. It's dynamic, has a great hook, and plenty of guitar bravado to rock a live crowd. By current trends, it may fall into a semi-cheesy category, but when you study these rock classics, you have to remember the time period they were written in. Though the riff in Feel Like Making Love was certainly repurposed from the Who's song Sparks, it still has a lot of originality in style and substance. Play it with the rock reverence it deserves and have fun doing it. That's what playing the guitar should be all about.
If you have any questions or would like to drop me a note, do so at MikePacelli.com. It's always cool to hear from you, and I answer every email. So until next time, I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me.